Imagine sitting in a nice room with an audience of 20 in front of a string quartet. Two violins, a viola, and a cello are arranged in an arc in front of you. As they begin to play, you can easily and distinctly hear that there are four instruments, and you can identify what they are. You can also identify where they are, not just left to right, but in three dimensions. You can probably tell exactly what note each instrument is playing, even if they're all playing the same note. And even if you had your eyes closed, you could probably tell the size of the room and something about what the surfaces were like. We use these positional clues to separate and perceive many individual sounds simultaneously. But do you know how all that happens? Our brains use resonant frequencies to identify what each sound is and multiple techniques to determine where each sound is coming from as well as what environment we're hearing them in. The resonance frequencies of each instrument create a unique signature that we use to distinguish one sound or voice from another. This is how we answer the what question. Even if we don't recognize it, we can still tell that a sound is different from others that we do know. To answer the where question, the brain uses several techniques. One is the difference in volume of the direct sound from each instrument. Whichever ear hears the sound loudest is the side the sound is coming from. The bigger the difference in volume between each ear, the more to the louder side that sound must be. Two, the brain uses the difference in arrival time of the direct sound from each instrument in the same way. The brain can actually detect the time difference between sounds arriving at your ears. So, the ear that hears the sound first is the side the sound comes from. The bigger the time difference between both ears, the more to that side the sound must be. Number three, your brain uses the time delay and frequency changes that occur when the sound is reflected around the room or environment you're in. It uses this information to help locate the sound's three-dimensional position in the room and to determine what the room or the environment is like. And finally, you coordinate all that with what your eyes tell you. As you can see, your hearing is truly miraculous. Now imagine what happens when you try to amplify this quartet for a larger crowd or a venue not well designed to enhance an acoustic performance, like most modern churches. First, we'll take four microphones and place them as close as we can where they sound the best to our ears. Then we pile all the sounds on top of each other by combining them in the mixer. Now our quartet is one-dimensional, not three-dimensional. That mix is amplified and sent to a single point, your PA speaker, which radiates out into the audience. Even if you have multiple speakers, you can't use stereo panning to good effect, so you still only have all the sounds piled on top of each other, just coming from two or more points. So think about all the techniques our brain uses to separate sounds in an acoustic environment, and you'll realize that when we try to shove a mix out of a PA speaker, we can't use any of them. There are only four ways you can get separation in an electronic mix. Volume, EQ, panning, and effects. Make sure you watch the video on the four ways you can get separation for the details. One of the lessons you'll learn from that video is that EQ is the only really effective way you have to separate the parts from this one-dimensional pile of sounds. EQ gives you the ability to carve out or exaggerate frequencies that will help us separate multiple sounds from each other. This is why you need EQ and you need to learn how to use it well. I'm Greg Hill for AV Genius.